Welcome to the video series on research methods and analysis by data and research. In this video, we will discuss about the test of normality using SPSS. Imagine that this curve represents our newly collected data. And this curve represents a normally distributed data. This is an ideal curve. A mathematical model structured with the assumption that the scores are distributed in such a way that the majority is concentrated towards the center of the curve and the rest will be distributed towards the left or right tails. While testing the normality, we will do a comparison between the data we collected and the mathematical model of the normally distributed data. The null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the new data that we collected and the normally distributed data. Let me modify this hypothesis into a simple statement. The new data is normally distributed. This is the null hypothesis. And as per the statistical assumption of the hypothesis testing, we will accept the null hypothesis if P is greater than 0 0.05 and we will reject the null hypothesis if p is lesser than 0 0.05. By rejecting the null hypothesis we may be confirming an alternate hypothesis that there is a significant difference between new data and normally distributed data. That means the new data is not normally distributed. Now we will see how we will do the analysis. While doing the normality assessment in SPSS, we have to first come to this data view and we'll go to this tab, Analyze. Click on the Analyze. And in the drop down, we have to choose Descriptive Statistics. And in Descriptive Statistics, we have to choose Explore. And we'll click on Explore. And there will be a window inside like this and we have to choose plots here don't get confused with any other tabs just click plots here and in plots we will go to normality plots with tests just continue and we can send the variables which we want to test the normality into the dependent list here then click OK. In the output view of SPSS, we'll get three tables, three initial tables. And in that, go to the third table. So here is a normality assessment. And this is the mean standard deviation and the descriptives of the two variables which we have seen just now. We can copy this and for an easiness of modifying the tables, we can paste it here. We can paste special and here it is. This is emotional intelligence and this is emotional regulation okay we need mean we need this we don't want can remove all these three median variance standard deviation minimum maximum range we will remove interquartile range we will remove median we can remove skewness and kurtosis let it be there 
and we can paste uh, we can remove this particular okay now we can copy this and paste it here and we'll expand this a little and this I can copy and I can paste it here I can remove all the unwanted values from here and I can add one column for Shapiro Wilk okay and its P is here okay and again I can go to the output window of the SPSS and I can copy this I will paste special this one here and Shapiroville statistics is given here and significance is here this is the table we created we know that we have to accept the null hypothesis if p is greater than 0 0.05 and reject the null hypothesis if p is lesser than 0 0.05. In the table, the Shapiro Wilk coefficient for emotional intelligence is 0 0.976 and for emotional regulation is 0 0.906 these two values are the coefficients and these two values are the most important here is the p here p for emotional intelligence is 0 0.864 which is greater than 0 0.05 in the case of emotional regulation p is 0 0.055 which is also greater than 0 0.05 that means we have to accept the null hypothesis the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the new data and the normally distributed data that means the data is normally distributed that's it we have interpreted the results of Shapiro Wilk test of normality. If you have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, please write to D and R three six five at gmail.com.